Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My hair looks like really different because I just got out of the shower, so embrace all of the beautiful curls. We are gonna make a sourdough French bread loaf. Now, let me be the first one to tell you, this is not gonna be a traditional sourdough that is gonna take you like multiple days to do. If you guys are following my Instagram, I'll link my Instagram here. It has been an absolute nightmare, absolute nightmare for me making the sourdough. During the beginning of quarantine, literally I cannot believe I am saying a year ago during the start of all of this, I made the most incredible, oh my God, they were so good. I, I made, what did I make? I made two gigantic, beautiful round loaves of sourdough and they were great, but they took me like three days to make. That is absolutely ridiculous. And I mean, I guess technically we have the time now, but ain't nobody got time for that. We don't. So we're gonna make French bread loaves that take, well, I guess if you include rise time, it's not gonna take you a whole day, tell you that. All right, super easy ingredients. I'm using a sourdough starter, but to be completely honest, if you just wanted to go and watch my French bread video, there's different measurements and stuff, but it's still gonna be as delicious. And, oh my God, with some salted butter. Oh, I'm ready. All right, let's make it. As always, I am starting out in my stand mixer, but you can make this exact same recipe, no difference by hand. I'm gonna add in one and three fourths cup of some warm water. Then to this, I'm gonna add a fourth of a cup of sourdough starter. So like I said, go to my Instagram and this does not look very appealing. It looks like really thin pancake batter, but my sourdough has been, it, it's basically been like a disaster to be completely honest. So I cannot give you guys a real recipe for like, so we're just gonna add this to the water for sourdough specifically because for whatever reason, it has just not worked out for me. I did try somebody else's recipe that was like very different, used like bread flour and this and that. And I just make mine, as Roman wanted to tell you guys, <laughs> we just make ours usually, and we're gonna mix this together with like all purpose flour and it has been an absolute nightmare. But if you guys have messed up on your sourdough starter too, make this recipe because you don't need a sourdough starter that is beautiful. Then once it looks like milky water, then we can add what would be one packet of yeast, which is two and a fourth teaspoons of yeast. Now, of course, yeast needs sugar to feed off of and grow. So we're gonna add two tablespoons of some sugar and we're gonna give this another little mix, make sure everything is nicely activated. And since I am using active dry yeast, which means it needs time to bloom, about five minutes, we're gonna wait and come back until it's like bubbly and foamy on top, similar to like a beer. Now, once you're nice and bubbly, we're gonna add two tablespoons of any type of oil. You can do vegetable, avocado, canola, whatever you have. I'm just using olive oil. Then I like to add about a teaspoon of some salt. Now, this next step is absolutely completely optional. I just wanna add it to my bread because I already know I'm gonna have it with pasta. So this is some rosemary. You can do any type of seasoning you want. I will show you guys a Dutch oven loaf of bread that I make with so many herbs. It is incredible. It is like one of my all time favorite breads to make. Uh-huh, okay, Roman just wanted to let you guys know that. So if you didn't wanna add it, just skip this step, but I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of some rosemary, really want that flavor. Then just gonna whisk that, or this is not a whisk, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna mix this just so it's nice and incorporated. Then we can add our flour as always. I always tell you guys, we scoop in and you just shake. You never wanna press it up against the side and pack it in there because that is how you get a super dense and like hard, sticky loaf of bread. We're gonna do four and a half cups. Then once you have your flour, you're just gonna add your dough hook. I have to obviously plug mine in, lock it in place and let it go. Okay, I had to unplug one of my lights. So that's why it's a little bit dark, but this is what we're looking for here. We're just gonna wait for it to come together. Remember to halfway scrape down the sides and you should be good to go. 
Okay, they all came together really well. I let it go about a good two minutes. If you were doing this by hand, I would say at least five to seven minutes. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of oil to the bowl for the sake of, can I get it on the sides? Okay. For the sake of not having to do more dishes, I'm just gonna do it in this bowl. Now your dough is gonna be slightly sticky. It is not gonna be overly, I need a spatula. Okay, I need a spatula. So your dough is not gonna be overly sticky. It is not gonna be like disgusting to handle, but it will be sticky and tacky. I'm adding, what, like a tablespoon of some oil. I wanna coat the top of the dough. What I like to do, and just coat it in some oil and just kind of roll it around the side of the bowl. Remember, it is going to be sticky, not terrible, but it's gonna be sticky. Okay, and because of that yeast in there, it is gonna rise, so you wanna make sure you coat the bowl evenly this would be a lot easier if i just took it out of the bowl but this is just what's going to work for us now i'm going to cover this and let it rise for about an hour and we'll come back to it an hour later this is what our dough looks like super nice and puffy now on a nice clean surface please wipe your counter down your cutting board whatever you're going to do sprinkle with a tiny bit of flour just so we don't get any stickage and we're gonna knock out our dough. Actually, it's just gonna fall apart. I'm just gonna hit it with a tiny bit more flour on top, not too, too much. And it's still not sticky. It is somewhat like obviously oily and tacky, but it is not sticky, sticky. Now, just bring it together a little bit, kind of soak up all of that extra flour for no waste, and it kind of makes it a little bit drier. Then with our nice dough, we're just going to roll it out. You could easily cut this into two loaves and make two smaller loaves. Just gonna press it down and just keep flipping it just to kind of help yourself elongate it. You don't need a rolling pin. I mean, you could use it, but I just feel like that's an extra tool to have to wash. Keep stretching. Okay, I think we are pretty good here. Now, since I want my loaf to be somewhat long, I'm not, not going for any specific measurement here because at the end of the day, it is still gorgeous, delicious bread. We are gonna start from the bottom and go to the top or from the top to the bottom, it's really up to you. And just like my sandwich bread, roll it into a log. This gives you like that nice little spiralization, but it's, it just works to help bring everything together and roll it back. And then I just like to kind of tuck the ends in, just somewhat pinch them. And remember, this is your loaf of bread. However you wanna eat it is how you wanna make it. It doesn't really matter what it looks like. You could even make this into little dough balls. Okay, I think that's about as even as it's gonna get. So now we're gonna take our baking tray I have mine with a little silicone, it's, the brand is Silipat, but what is this? A silicone baking mat. No spray needed, no oil, no butter, no nothing. That is another reason I really like these. You're just gonna take it, lift your dough on there, kind of work out your final little touches. And now we're gonna let this rise for about 30 minutes. Cover it with a towel. Okay, see you in 30 minutes. 30 minutes, oh, wow, okay, definitely rose a lot, or, er, eh, it spread out, but definitely a lot bigger, probably definitely like double the size, wow, okay, now, I messed up by saying we're gonna throw it at 350, scratch that, not 350, we're gonna throw it in at 400 for 15 to 20 minutes, now, you can cook it a little bit longer, depending on how brown you like the top, you can egg wash it, why waste an egg to me, it doesn't add any flavor, I don't really care. I love my bread toasted anyway. So that's what we're going to go with. 25 minutes later, she is out and looks, <laughs> she looks great. But let me tell you, I definitely should have made this into two loaves because it is, ja it is hot, but it is gigantic. So I'm going to put this on a cooling sheet and I'm going to let it sit. You really want to wait at least like a couple of hours. But it, I mean, hey, if you're tempted, go ahead and cut into it now and just know if it's a little bit gummy, it's because you squished it and the steam is still trapped in there. So it's not gonna finish cooking. 
This looks really good to me. If you wanted, you could slather it with some oil and throw it up to 450 and, you know, just let it get a little bit brown, but I personally love it. Oh, it's so pillowy. Ooh, I'm ready. Okay, I did not take my own advice and I waited about 40 minutes to cut into this and let me just tell you the words that I want to use to describe this bread, I cannot use on YouTube because I will get demonetized. But let me tell you, this is the softest. Oh, I just almost cussed. This is the softest bread I've ever made. Like, what? When you're cutting into the bread, I usually love like a super hard, crispy exterior. But oh, the, what? It is just so freaking tender and soft and pillowy. Oh, you need to make this. I'm telling you, slice it up, throw it in a Ziploc bag, throw it in the freezer, and you will have bread whenever you want.